All right guys, it's Dave from Drift Games and it is part two of our best of 2023. If you haven't watched part one, go back and watch it. If you're not familiar with who we are, well, we make car content, cool car builds. We built a cool garage. We also travel all over the world doing drift events. Now, if you want to see the best of everything the second half of 2023 had to offer, well, we've got the video for you. No point in trawling through 75 hours of footage. Our boys have been busy working away, getting the very best and most exciting bits all for this video. So let's go. It's the second half of 2023, the best of drift games. Enjoy. We were going to get a blindfold for Josh, but obviously in the panic of getting the car ready, we didn't. So we found the next best thing. This is the most degrading thing that's happened to me on this well, channel. Wait, see. <laughs> this is the genuine first reveal that we've had of a livery. I haven't seen any render designs, ideas. Sorry, I've been teased quite a bit. Apparently there's um male genitalia all up the side of it. Right, bag on. If, I, any, I if any of you kick me in the balls, blindfolding you would have been very degrading. We're putting the we're not, we're not paper gonna, bag We're not going to kick in the balls. Man. We're not going to kick in the balls. Now we didn't even think about kicking in the balls, and now we're thinking about kicking in the That's balls. That's literally all I want to do right now. <laughs> okay. Which way does it look best? Neither. Right, walk, and I'll tell you when to step. I, I, don't, it, I want it to fall over. Oh, it's very echoey in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's weird. This is fantastic. This is a great idea I made up 30 seconds before we started filming. Yeah, step up. Step in. <laughs> Two, one, go, go, go. I thought someone's lifting the bag up my head. Holy crap. Hey! I did it. Simple, quirky. Is it exactly like you? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm happy there's no um, dicks on there. <laughs> quirky, but not over the top. Uh, no, I, I think it's perfect. I genuinely think it's perfect. It genuinely now looks like an FD car. Hopefully, it goes as well as it looks now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's all I can say. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have oil pressure. Good. Yeah. It's so strange. It's a completely different car. Feels weird saying on video, Yay, but that's the car. I, got the I was like celebrating in the car, and it's like, is this it? Is this? Uh, have we done it now? Is this what it, all it was? Like you just want to put a set of Valinos on it because it's got it's just blowing through normal tires like and like so controllable. I had it on big angle there and it's fine. Left foot braking fine. Like it's a weapon of a thing. This is a pro car now. Like it drives like a pro car. I'm not gonna lie, Dave. I think I made the right decision here on the way. You know what, I was questioning you when you went for the, for the DSO 5 in, in the shadow chrome. I was thinking black might be the look. I think you were so right. Don't, don't film me doing work, because then people think I have to do it all the time. This is how exciting. <coughs> Here comes the moment. here 
open. That's fully open now. <laughs> it sounds unbelievable. It doesn't sound like a G36. Thought we'd catch Adam for a minute because we've got very limited time because we're setting up the event to get an honest review of all of our cars, which aren't all mine, so I will cry at some points maybe and not at others. Of a review of what he thinks of them, and then we're going to get him to rate them out of ten. Ooh. Before we, before we talk about cars, can I rate the space? This this new creation that you've done. Yes, it's really good. It's probably one of the coolest places I've been. I would give this space an eight out of ten. The last two points are lighting. For me, it's a little. It's a little too moody. Daigo's place is the only other place I'd say that like competes with the vibe you've created. That's a, that says a lot. Yeah. So we're gonna build a full rock pool now and like yep. everything. <laughs> so this, this thing is like the most ridiculous looking. Like photos, it looks ridiculous. In person, the the presence of the car is like fucking absurd. Sorry, I know you're gonna need to bleep that out, but I needed the <laughs> emphasis. Amazing job you did at making this thing look unique. Yeah. The presence is menacing. I think like if we're talking fit and finish, it looks like everything is fitted really well, but you've got a lot of different like textures going on between like gloss, this is like kind of a little satin. Mind you, I understand this is a drift car and this is a comp car. I was asked to be extremely critical, so I don't want people to think oh, no. like, oh, we're, he's we're, le we're, leave, we're leaving them off the leash here. That's what I want. I want honest reviews. Cause yeah, cause like, you it. know, I don't want to say most people are probably sucking your in, in the videos, but like if someone sees this car, they're like, this is the craziest thing. They're not going to be like, hey dude, you got a wet sand your roof. <laughs> so we're being, we're being real, you know? I mean, interior execution wise, I'd say is, Pretty dang good, you don't have wires running everywhere. It's painted, it's tidy, it looks usable. I would say this is probably eight out of 10. I think the, the last two points on the table would probably be like that last bit of fit and finish. From here, the car looks like the craziest drift car you'll ever see at any event, ever. And that's so. enough for me. That's exactly yeah. what the aim was at the end of it, was just to make something that people go, wow. Well, hey, how you doing? Woo! Just arrived? Just got here, literally fresh off the plane. Let's get it. Right, so you know we've done something with a car for you in the same style. I heard a little something. Uh, Dave was like, come back for LZ World Tour and uh, we'll make the car stupid like yours. Those were his words. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh wow, hope, can hope, I just hope enjoy you like the them. place? <laughs> I haven't even, I haven't even got to see car. this place yet. Oh, wow. These cars are so Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> But we've got the flake, we've got the color. Yeah. Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> Yo, I love it. I'm an, oh my god. I can't wait. Yes. It's got a bigger turbo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're gonna have some fun. taking everything in right now. People that I know left and right. I didn't even get a chance to actually soak in how cool this spot is. I've been seeing this car for years and to see this in person and seeing the fitment, I can appreciate Dave's style with all his cars. It's it's amazing to be here. I love Ireland already. This Insane. This place is nuts. Yeah. It's, it's actually absolutely great. nuts. You guys killed it. Brilliant. Inspiration. It's giving me inspiration. This is the craziest studio garage street that I think I've ever seen. I think I need to stop slacking and renovate my shop now. I can't fit in my car anymore. <laughs> Face of confusion. How's it going? 
It's good, man. First couple laps in this thing. Like, second lap, I feel like I could qualify, so that's a good start. That's a great start. I'm about to go do one of my first chases. I'm excited. Dude, we're three laps in. <laughs> I'm dude. ready, dude. <laughs> Are we gonna jump in for a lap? Yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm not doing so high. I need some guidance. I lost your bumper. I thought bumper was in shit, anyways. <laughs> So we're gonna jump in and see how it goes. You good, Larry? How you doing? Yeah. So I think you're a bit of a madman piloting this car around this track with these drivers. Uh, I mean, I guess there's a level of trust. Um, so Bagsy, that was his first run when I was just following him right now. His first run, you went and chased him. Yeah, and he cut the entry pretty short. So we'll see how it goes now. That took balls going into that corner at that speed. If you notice, that's literally the fastest that will go. First, second, all the way to third. Whenever he initiates, I basically can set myself. We haven't slept in a while anyway, that's for sure. Yeah, over the last, I don't know, it's weeks. <laughs> the engine arrived about two or three weeks ago and we totally transformed the FDR X7. Four order in a PPRE build from New Zealand, repainted a new livery, new custom wheels, a replica of the 787B kind of style from Strom. So we came to them with the idea. They made custom 11 inch wheels in the rear and nines in the front with the turbo fans and I think it looks sick, it's wild and I can't wait to drive it. <laughs>
go. Oh my good God. <laughs> Best running Modelo I have ever seen. Ever. <laughs> what is going on, people on the YouTube? We are still at the Drift Games Bash. Gonna be excited. I'm not sure. I was expecting to be that excited. Right then. AJM car sales. We've been here a few times before on the channel because they're a small dealership in Northern Ireland that has some of the craziest aftermarket JDM cars straight from Japan. Josh and I have decided that because the last round of Driftmasters is in the stadium, in the Pegay in Ardove, in Warsaw, we would like to make a big road trip to the last event, which means we're gonna drive through all of Europe, check out amazing garages, go to the Nürburgring, do some skids, and we need a car for it. So we're gonna buy a car, modify it, and use that as the maiden voyage for the car. So we need a suitable car for it. It's quick and bouncy. Quick and very bouncy. The bounciness not so good, the quickness good. Do you know what, with such a stancy uh, kit and wheels on it, I thought it would rub a lot more than it does, but it doesn't rub. Yeah. Space for the luggage, space for the camera gear. The 1J is reliable, it's got enough go. 
Yeah, I'm liking this one. Really liking this one. Oh, oh look, at look at this. <laughs> Alright, we have a winner. That K truck, that's, going, that's the one we're going in. Oh, she's got go. She has go on her. 1J sounds amazing. I'd prefer this, I think, because I don't have one. Yeah. Irregardless, I think I could just take my other S13, which is probably better than this across Europe. Yeah. So then we wouldn't need to buy any car. So if we're going to buy a car, I feel it's super similar to this. I have a couple of S bodies very similar to this. This, I only have the Verosa, which is not road legal. Yeah. So that would be the question. But again, it's not my decision. We're going to let you guys decide in the comments. This is, this is the height level we want to go to. You know what, I think the white and the red works really well. The Zero Kai's are nice, but I love the concave on these. I think they make the car look just so much wider. That's really good, I really like it. It's actually, I thought these would be too wide, but they've actually sunk in mm. kind of Wait. well. Oh, can you approve? Rocky loves it. Absolutely loves it. I love one day. What is up guys, the time for our big journey has arrived. We are traveling three and a half thousand kilometers to the finale of Driftmasters. And we're starting here at Dublin Port and the boys are in town. I want to mention that we have a new member to the Drift Games team. He's been working with us for years on the Driftmasters stuff and we've known you for what, 10 years maybe now? Yep. But Lucas, AKA Bandana Boy, is now a part What's of the up? Drift Games crew. And of course, to give him an easy first week, we're making him sit in a car edit for what, three and a half thousand kilometers. <laughs> Thankfully, we're down. Lucas, we, we, we forgot Lucas. There is uh, three countries in the United Kingdom. Is that right? There is four countries in the United Kingdom. How's that four? There's four countries. Northern no. Ireland, bollocks. <laughs> Fair, you didn't realize Holland and the Netherlands were the same place until Why we started. Why would you out me like that? Until we well, you know what? I, the trip. Right, I'm, I'm gonna out Dave. We were supposed to be on an earlier ferry this morning. What happened, Dave? It's nothing to do with Holland and the Netherlands, I'll tell you that. <laughs> look, slept it in. Look, Josh is not good at geography. <laughs> I'm not good at timekeeping. <laughs> we're on a road trip that's totally based on geography and timekeeping. <laughs> Is racing. He's got a very special car in here, which is this R34 GTR. So we're gonna have a little chat with Marty. He's gonna tell us more about it. Hello, Martin. What up? Are you How good? Going? This is a very nice one. This is a. Getting towards a quarter million of a Euro car now, which is ridiculous. And this one has a lot of spec, right? The full HGS catalog, so it's 2.8 stroke kit, all the head done, HGS, the, the latest GT3 turbos, even uh, the latest FCON, which, you know, the FCON was a really old ECU, but it's got the latest one, which is obviously way more tunable. So they just the HGS in this one. So, tick, yeah. tick, 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 throw it at the car. Exhaust, the whole lot is practically HGS. So, this car, had, if I'm not mistaken, the longest running competition chassis in the history of drifting. We think so, yeah. All right, so 2000 and? 2005, it's been in the Driftworks camp 
and I think straight away went into competition then. James, the co-owner of Driftworks, was driving it, it was his car. Then it went through various guises, various different drivers, always competing at the highest level. And then I took it on about five years ago now and just kind of developed it, took it to the next level, almost made it Driftmasters spec, you know, with the sequential. Well, and, well, yeah, yeah. It, it, it won a Driftmasters Drift event. There's no more Driftmasters oh, yeah, spec yeah. than that. Yeah. <laughs> He's a uh, very posh. Not posh. You got horses over there. Yeah, well, they're, they're... To be fair, there's a lot of sheds around that have horses beside them as well. It doesn't make them posh. Adam, it is great to see. We have the 15, which we've seen at our Drift Games events in Ireland. And I don't know if it picks up on the camera, but it's kind of like a purple gray. Gray purple, yeah. It's um, a really unique color. A girl built it in Japan initially and had that color. The only things that are still on it from Japan are the front wings, the bonnet the rear spoiler and the bride seat and the passenger seat that was a driver's seat but as you can tell I'm not I'm European spec you know I can't fit in that thing this is out of all of them this is my most complete build in terms of how deep we've gone financially and stress wise and how much I've used it in terms of enjoyment this thing has been my absolute joy machine since it's worked it's been amazing I love the reg yeah <laughs> S15 cry yeah. See, I, should, you should island, get these, island cars can't. No, you should, get, you should get a person I play saying S or cry. That could be your <laughs> reg. You Just, yeah. I'm sure someone's already <laughs> taken that. <laughs> this is gonna be wow. This is very JDM. And he's got a far cooler JZX in here as well. All right, let's hop out, meet the man behind Violent D, and check out all the cool Japanese stuff that he's been hoarding for a very long time. Behind Violent D. This place is just. This is what happens when hobbies get out of hand. Get out of hand, yeah. Although it's a. Uh, we was. Well, we've been doing it for a long time and I needed someone like base to run it from, so I just thought, oh, we need to, we need to do something special with it. This thing is gorgeous. Ah, oh, thank you. It's, um, it's been a. Is this your own car? This is my own car, yeah. We've, we've literally. It was, it was a bone stock body, pearl white before I'd done the last drift and it was actually super, super clean. <laughs> That's incredible. That's an incredible car. Whose car is this? Joey. Joey, you're a man that also spent a lot of money on body kits. Holy moly, rock a moly in my pockets. What a blessing. Got it on me. I got options. Real stepper. Check the shoes. Get it popping. Eating good. Feeling good. Where my hop is. Is this the new Origin Labo kit? Well, it would be rude not to. I mean, it, it is a tunnel. for life. Alloy killer in a white car. Yeah, gotta be very, very precise. Pretty close, Dave. Pretty close. Good, how are you? Thanks for having us. Hello. So, introduce yourself and your establishment. Uh, 
Peter Gowie from uh, Portello Motorsports. Welcome. Do you have like a Hot Wheels sort of display here? Yeah, that was the idea. If you come wow. in and you, you walk in, you get a bit of the wow effect. This is like something out of a computer game that you just go select. It's select. also because it's just smart. You pay for the whole building, so might as well use it completely. So you start off proper like yeah. restorations? Yeah, yeah, because these cars are starting to bring in big money if you sell them, so might as well restore them properly. And you've got a Mark IV here. This one looks like a pad. Oh, that's a good story. A life? Um, it was crashed 180 kilometers an hour into the barriers on the motorway wow. on a, a very yeah, rainy night. Was it this corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel this. <laughs> this corner was about <laughs> there. Wow. Wondering since we got in here how the cars got up there, and I can only imagine that this is lifted up by the forklift, yep. and they just drive in, kind of yeah, off a forklift ramp onto the shelf. Which is, I mean, we thought we were sketchy, but this is we seem completely legit now. Legit. I'd say we are pretty much health and safety. We'll be like, mm. all right, so now we're heading to Amsterdam. To do some sketchy stuff. It's gonna get interesting from here. Let's hit the road. Wow, there is a lot going on here. Hello, Sebastian. Hello. Doggy, good. In our country. I know. All right. Calling through. Good, good. I put literally one message in a, in like a group chat uh, that you guys were coming and uh, huh? now we have this. <laughs> so I have no idea. I've no idea what's about to happen, but uh, I think it's going to be cool. Entirely sure what's going on. You're more familiar with this. I feel like we're going street drifting, but <laughs> it definitely feels like we are. So we're going on a bit of a car cruise. And a lot seeing of, what happens. A lot of rear wheel drive cars. I'm getting a little bit uh, suspicious of what's about to happen. But we are in some sort of Fast and the Furious scenario on the back streets of Amsterdam. I don't think anybody's ever filmed this before, so you guys are along for the ride. Available now in the shop, just letting you know. We haven't been here before, we've been dying to come for a couple of years. You guys have been pumping out some really awesome stuff. Yeah, let's go for a little explore around. We're 
back to, to Clint's car. Uh, Something about a drift car that hasn't been drifted. That's just so clean, yeah. so perfect. I mean, it's never got, this is the last time it'll ever be like this. That's the way drift cars are, but this thing is beautiful. And then, uh, and also running the BCs, obviously. Like, right? all cars in the shop are on BCs now. BC racing. We have the Strom wheels, we have the Link ECU. There's the formula, people. Follow it, because it works. And then it's hard to see, but it also has a turbo. It's a uh, bottom mount. Oh, I see, yeah, right down here. Yeah. Christ. And since it was fairly cramped, uh, we even had the, the intake from the turbo is running through the engine mount. Wow, through the engine mount. Yeah. No way. <laughs> Look at that. So, hang on a second, so that's where... The, the air filter goes That's where the, the air filter, filter yeah. goes. So the air filter goes through the engine mount of the car. I've never seen anything quite like that. That's unbelievable. All right, so we found out there was some balancing issues, so we got them all sorted on our four wheels. We had no spigot rings on the front of the car, and also it was struggling to spin wheels. Not that we were trying or anything. So we've just made a little alteration to the car. The guys here at DBM have done a little bypass, so we're gonna see if it's any better. So for scientific reasons, we're gonna see if it can do a good old fashioned burning. Okay, definitely can confirm it was um, definitely a trash control issue and it is fixed. Can you do the anti-like thing? Oh my god. I didn't know three cylinders could make that noise. Oh, in the comfy seats again. from top to bottom in here. This is just a storage unit for you guys. Definitely. Getting there? Yeah, but yeah, this will probably make you happy. Oh, jeez, I did not expect that. Ooh, this yeah. is tidy. Love the purple on it, surprisingly. I, you know what I love about this, Josh, which I never thought I would, is the color match of the rocker cover to the paint on the inside of the bay. I think that looks so good. It's, usually it's a contrasting color you go with. It's almost yeah. too much, but it's really not. Oh, it's beautiful. Parked us up for the day, a little bit of SR love. Lift the bonnets, I'm guessing there's something. Is there anything? Is there? There's something going on in here. There's definitely going to be something. Oh. What? <laughs> it's a K24? Yes, it's correct. So it's a K24 turbo. Stock block. Stock block. Stock everything. We just uh, want to develop a setup with this car. Uh, right now it's making 500 plus horsepower, 550 newton meters. And this is like full steel rear end, steel, steel uh, well, aluminium front end on the E46. But this one is lighter than the Kevlar uh, E46 with the 2J that was at the workshop. Because of the engine? Yeah. That's 
ridiculous. So full stock, so the engine essentially set up on a 2J yeah. is more weight than just if you had a K24 with stock body on it. Yeah. Bombshell time, folks, bombshell. I can't believe in three weeks you made a fully working car for Michelle. here at the Nuremberg Ring. We said we were gonna do it, we're doing it. We're a little bit nervous. If you look around, we're here in our comfy JZX Cruiser. We're only gonna do two laps today because they're obviously what? Probably 16 minute laps or whatever the track. It's a 10 kilometer or 10 mile Yeah, it's lap, a long track. We're gonna do it just to say we did it. It's not like, we're not gonna thrash the car, but Josh and I have never been here. So I'm gonna do what any sensible person would do and let Josh go first. Yeah, I'm not too, I feel nervous for this now. Like, I've played it a hundred times on the PlayStation, but like, it's also one of the things that you want to do and then you don't want to do and you You can't press reset on this now. No, you can't. Dave's saying that we shouldn't just take it easy. F*** that! <laughs> you just got passed by a wall. No, I let him pass, I let him pass. <gasps> Absolutely. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. There's cones over there. Dude, the brakes have gone. <laughs> <laughs> the brakes Whoa. are so soft. What? It's so roasted, bro. <laughs> no, look at the front one, dude. <laughs> the wheels are black. So we may need some new brake pads for the way home, I would say. Oh, no. <laughs> Fourteen hours later, all we've accomplished is a lot of mileage all the way from the Nurburgring to now at Secret Test Airfield, where we're going to meet up with Adam LZ and Peter Vianzek and see the car that Adam LZ is going to be driving at Driftmasters. But most importantly, on that fourteen hours, we have now created a new rap name for Josh. So because he loves tea and he's always breaking cars and he's really hard on the brakes, Tea Break. That is the new rap name for Josh Holdsworth. He will now no longer respond to Josh or Josh Holdsworth. It will just be tea breaks. If you see him in the street, just say, hey, tea break. And he'll be like, what up? You've really just done me like that. Look who's at Driftmasters. This is weird. I'm stoked. Yeah, the, honestly, everything feels really good. The hardest thing is just uh, a few like adjustments in the actual cockpit. Just like a, a narrower seat and then getting my steering wheel a little bit closer. Just because I'm kind of like straight armed, which is a bit funky for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still, I mean, I, I wish there was like a sweeper where we could really stack up so I yeah. could like play around with surging. But honestly, like getting comfortable in a, an area like this with lots of like inside clips is way more challenging. So we're wrapped up at testing, we did some drifting, we did some donuts around LZ's car, we caught up with Adam, caught up with Peter. I'm getting hyped for the weekend already, but we got one last place to go with this poor car, which to be fair, has taken everything we've thrown at it for five days. We gotta go to the finish line, which is in Warsaw, which is at the stadium.
two days after the biggest drift event we've ever been at in Poland and we are straight on a plane again. We have just landed in Toronto for the next step of the LZ World Tour. This is going to be a big one. I think one of the biggest events that Canada has ever seen. So we had to come here because you guys are building stuff that I don't know, it's like you haven't seen anything else that's easy before and you just decided to build the difficult stuff, right? Yeah. We learned a word called escalation. It starts as a small idea and then you've got a bright glitter purple Porsche K and drift car thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> In very American fashion, so right? Took a, it took a German SUV, put an American V8 in it. This is an LS. LS2. Two, two supercharged. Supercharged aluminum. And what sort of power does it make? It's 530 at wheels. Assume it has a very fancy angle kit on this because you got an FDF hat on. Yeah. We yeah. obviously run all our stuff on FDF. So you, they made you an angle kit for this? Yeah, one of the kind. So you it doesn't surprise me that much that it's one of a kind. They're gonna they're gonna fly off the <laughs> shelves. Josiah, they're gonna fly. So, but inside it's pretty nice. Yeah, it has a Bentley seat. It has Bentley seats, <laughs> actually. It's got rear seats, it's got Subwoofers in the center console. And look at the, any drift cars have this on the door, right? Well, because my background is coming from like car audio, so I have to. It's a party machine, that's what I call it, right? Yeah. <laughs> party wagon. I thought I'd seen it all in drifting, but I have not seen it all. You guys have built a proper Audi drift car. I need to see what's going on under here. Okay, so that's, that's, what engine is this? <laughs> Hold on, that's a... Yes, let's guess. VR6. Yeah, VR6, yeah. Is that VR6? Yes, 3.2. VR6, Forest Internals. Can we start it? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Sounds like a 2 j It really does. I don't know, have we, been, have we been missing a trick? Because it's so easy to get these chassis and engines in Europe. Can they I asked me, do I want a car to drive while we're in Canada? It's a little bit more exciting than our rental car. Nothing wrong with our rental car. But then you sent me a picture. It didn't look like this. No, it looked yes. very different. And I was like, I don't mind. Just don't, you know, don't put any stress or any pressure in. And then you went crazy and started yeah. rapping. <laughs> and now we got the wildest looking A6. It's A4 Avant. Started A4. life as A4 Avant with two liter turbo. I blow, bought the car with blown engine and that's how we met with the guys. Okay. So they did the S4 V6 S4. supercharged swap. So this is S4 powered. What? I'm just looking here going, what? Oh my God. There's a lot of speakers in here. A lot of speakers. It's got more speakers on one door than it does in my entire car. That is true. I'm gonna do a little practical joke on Dave because um, well, we have a uh, Brown noise, which is apparently a frequency that makes you shit yourself. <laughs> so we're gonna play this. We said we, it's gonna be a bassy tune for Dave, and uh, we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> Sounds nice. Sounds like a Lambo. We're getting inspiration here. For bathroom? You're looking at wet just before I got in there. It's called the brown one. He tried to make me shit myself in the man's car. He gave it to me 20 seconds ago. I'm sorry, but it was just. Lucas, I'm not sure this is working out. <laughs> Unbelievable. I like it. Can we go 
back to Nurburgring now? <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to today's episode. We are here at Vibrant Performance, just outside Toronto. The day before, we go to the LZ World Tour stop at Motorsports Park in Toronto. And there's some awesome cars, awesome people, so we're gonna get in the mix. So we got a real mix of stuff here. We got old school, like, I think it's a Chevy Bel Air. All blacked out, love this. But then, look at this slick S2000. Black on black, and one close to my heart. Know that we bought a 1JZ A86. Here's another 1JZ A86. Yep. This one though is absolutely spotless. What I really like is the, the finish they've put on the, the 1JZ, right? So it's like a kind of an off gray. this wing. I want this wing and I want this bonnet. And I'm start saving. What's up guys? We are here in Toronto. It is Toronto Motorsports Park. LZ World Tour Canada. The track action is going to be all on Adam LZ's live stream. But behind all that, the most amazing car show is going on. We've never been to a car show in Canada before and there's some wild stuff here. Everything you can imagine. So we're gonna do a little hunt around the car park, find the stuff that's strange, unusual, good, bad, show you guys all that's going on in the Canadian car scene. So we'll start with this beautiful, beautiful 180SX. It is a 180SX, or 240 sx as they were calling here, with the PS13 front. Look at this thing. I know it's on air, but I'm a big fan of that. Is it on air? Babe, it has to be on air. It look at look at the wheels, it's tucking rim. So this is like beautiful glitter paint, all the dish. This is such a Dave style here. 326 power wing. I would love a 180 to look just like this. I like the PS13 front, I think that works really well. Another one of my cars of the show. So BMW, and I assume it's a, oh it's 2002, so this is actually, it starts as a very expensive car. And he's done a custom metal wide body, and he's purposely patined it, and now it's just got the roof box, whatever. This is a cool car, really cool. And like the front of it, watch, got the reservoir out on the outside, hella lamps, it's got the usual nine inch lights and a custom splitter. I love that look, I think that's amazing. It's gonna be a busy rest of the day, but it's gonna be fun. The crowd is packed, we're pumped. We met so many awesome people. The day is only starting. So we 
just came towards our office and at the same time as our event going on at the same race circuit there is drag racing going on and not just any drag racing the most random drag racing bring whatever you want Wow. This is a streetcar? Yeah. When I got told I was putting in a streetcar class, I was expecting something more road looking. What's the horsepower, the weight? Uh, with nitrous, it's around 1,000 horsepower. The weight is 2,900 pounds. And how fast does it do a quarter mile? Uh, 881. Shit. Genuinely shit myself. disparity between the cars here, Dave, is like 150 horsepower. I mean, a bear like 1500 horsepower, like God only knows. 200 horsepower! Oh. Safe to say that he's uh, brought a spoon to a gunfight. built in-house. 
So it starts off as round bar for our CNC's for the spacer, tie rod bodies, everything like that. Sheet of metal, you can get a good idea over here on our water jet. Oh, this is a water, not laser. Yeah, this is all water jet. So this three quarter. And water goes through this? Water and sand. Wow. I see something fancy going through this here. Is the party is. <laughs> right now they're making one of those handbrake handles we were just looking at in the front door. Yeah, so that's what it looks that's like when it comes out. Wow. That's so what he's making right now. That kids is how handbrakes are made. Showing off. You know what? It is a little bit of a flex at the track, but I think of it as like it's much safer, it's much faster, it's more efficient. You don't need a jack. It's flex. Way to justify it to yourself. That's what it is. I like that he's justified it with all these other reasons, but really just looks so cool. We have the HGK from Drift HQ hatch, rear quarters. This is from Sultan. These are super Our nice. Sultan from uh, Store 17. You can see yeah. his logo there. Hey. So the two link. PDMs are located here and here. These are controlling everything that you see in the rear and some things within the car. So we have three fuel pumps running. We have nitrous, bottle warmers, controllers, sensors. We have um, the cool suit and we have the ethanol content sensor. We have a lot of things going on back here. We also have potentiometers on the suspension and we have tire temperature sensors as well as track temperature sensors on this car. Wow. There is a lot more stuff going on back here than yours. Mine is a diff. So <laughs> and a fuel tank. And this fuel is tank. the potentiometer. So this measures the travel of the suspension while you're driving to see if your dampening is set up correctly. If you have too much bounce, how much is it compressing? Is it hitting the bump stops? If it is, let's adjust the dampening. Let's increase the spring rate. Let's do something to correct that. <laughs> Just see Adam's face. So you can see Dave is driving the car that Adam LZ drove at the LZ Fest in Ireland. And I have bought my pretty car, which I'm a little bit terrified of because it's a really dangerous wall track, but hopefully we should be okay with it. chat when I was doing a burnout so all the water shot in to the car and then just steamed up the car and everything else I felt the hot water on my neck I was like it's not a fire so it's okay if it was a fire it might be game over but I've had no practice in the rain yet and I don't even know if I will before qualifying so uh, but yeah, we're here to have fun I don't care and the car is good we just put the pipe back on filled it full of fluid all right Josh get ready for your tops you gonna do a parade I'm in a parade it was St. Patrick's Day so this is much better <laughs> Just going into the top 16 parade, which I'm. Um, I think this, this is my first parade ever. I don't know, just gonna have a bit of fun here. Genuinely happy about this.
kidding me? So it looks like Josh halfway through the run is ECU, the link cut out the car. Something to do with water issue, we don't know what it is yet. He's on a five minute rule at the moment, he's probably got about three minutes left. The car won't start, not sure what's going on with it, but the boys are trying their best. Just to let you guys know that Josh is halfway through a top 16 battle against Dara Spencer and Dara is here trying to fix Josh's car. It's not. He's, 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 he's out, of his, out of his car in his suit trying to fix the car. Is that there? Not no, That's all she wrote. Today we are fitting an X Force exhaust to my A90 Toyota Supra. This is what it sounded like before. <laughs> Not bad, but I think it could be spicy. So I got onto the guys from X-Force, got myself the A90 exhaust, and we're now gonna see what the true potential of my Supra is, and I'm excited. And then we've got open, which is open with the map on, which is gonna be the end of the world. Craig? <laughs> That's very loud. The car that has been taking far too long, far too much time to finish, it is my world first 3S GE Plus T S15. We're gonna get you up to speed because today is one of the final days. Aesthetically, we haven't got there yet, but mechanically, we're gonna get there today because we're going to the dyno and we're hoping to see what this thing makes. But this is something you're not gonna see every day. is flames. Hey, flames! <laughs> There's a small verbal. That was, that, I, I said to John, nothing too obvious, just a small verbal. I think we nailed it. I think we nailed that. It's quite discreet. Discreet is the word I would use. John, love your work. I went to our good friends at Strong Wheels and I said, I need you to make me a one of one set of wheels forged for this car. And in three weeks, from concept to on tires and ready to go, they are here. Ready? Drum roll, please. Go. That's crazy. Is that a two piece or a three piece? It's a two piece, forged. That's sick. So this is a wheel that, it's a wheel that doesn't exist. So they've called it the FS series because that's a forged Strom. Right now, they're on the front. Oh man. Oh, that's ambitious. That Wait, is that's ambitious. Exactly. The front we knew was gonna work. The rear is. I didn't. That's what we. Off. You didn't think the front would work? No. no the front is very surprising. Um, that's what we expected. That's not that bad. It looks spectacular. It's exactly how I wanted it to turn out. It's even better, to be honest. The Stroms, the forged Stroms, just perfect for the car. It's beautifully balanced now, and it's got the engine conversion. I'm so, I'm actually overwhelmed a little bit because it's been a little bit of a journey, this car, and uh, I wanted like my perfect S15, and I think this has absolutely nailed it.
All right, guys, it is game day here at Jaffest. It is the final big car show and big drift event of the year in Ireland. Josh is in the MX-5. I, even though I wanted to be in the Corolla, we bent the steering rack, we couldn't fix it. I'm in the Corvette. Today is gonna to be a tough one. Probably the biggest that... You ruined my intro. <laughs> Jimmy's driving Darren's car. There's 50 drivers, 32 spaces. It's gonna be a stressful one. Well, you're along for the ride. After 10 years of commentating them, this is my first ever Jaffest Top 16 parade. Holy sh**! This is gonna be weird. I'm not presenting it for the first time in 10 years and I'm actually in the Top 16. So it's a bit emotional. I'm gonna hold it together because I'm an adult. <laughs> Okay, so you can't really see it on camera, but it's, um, this is the first time that I'm seeing the crowd here, and I'm kind of glad that I'm only seeing it now because it's really ridiculous now. They've got the whole grandstand all over there. There's another grandstand. The whole gates are surrounded, which is fairly incredible. Here we go, Dave's first ever top 16 parade in Montgomery Park. I can imagine this is uh, quite a big moment for him. Does it feel weird to be on the other side, buddy? Very weird to be on the other side. I'm usually interviewing Jane. Now here I am beside Jane. Not to over-dramatize this, but this is a pretty big moment. Staying on the door show, James Dean is no joke. Now to see what James is gonna do. Oh, I'm nervous just on the side here. I actually don't know. shame of going out to James Dean that way. I get that's as much as I could give him. Like. And you did. Like, that's obviously a very fast car and you stayed with him. Like, you genuinely kept up. I was on his door at the end of the run, like, on his, actually on his door. I think my lead was my best lead I've done today. And I just, on the chase, it's just trying to dive through the smoke. It's so hard to see where he is sometimes. Once he gets that little jump on you, I just lost him for a second, then I caught him again. But look, to do a 90, what, 90 point qualifying run, win 32, 16, and go out to James, that's a good day at the office for me. As far as our drift days go, this has been a bad one. The car is wrecked, but it was totally worth it. Like, that's probably one of the best days drifting I've ever had. It would be nice to give them a little bit of a token of a present. Now, I was up late last night doing a bit of arts and crafts. It's not a professional job, but it's the, it's the best I could do. But at the LZ World Tour, we got all the lads to sign a t-shirt, and we just thought it'd be a nice little, um, something to give back to the people that helped us. Hello there, Jerry. Hello. So this may seem very random. For the LZ World Tour, obviously you did a lot of work on Hertz car, last minute as usual, and worked. Wait, wait, have you a car on the trailer out there now that you're tricking me with? No, I don't. We, we, we have, actually. Well, we do have a car on the trailer. We, we do have a car, but, <laughs> but, but that's not for you. But this is a little bit of a token of appreciation to you 
for doing some late hours and taking on our stupid calls and last minute things and all the look. Anyways. Yeah, Joey. Jesus, don't make me cry on camera. I'm all about masculinity. Don't make me cry on camera, lads. <laughs> oh. No, no, seriously, guys, thanks a million. That's that. Ah, oh, God. It's all going off. Hello. So we have two more down here and these are for Lloyd Patson that maps all of our cars and Dara Spencer that's helped down here with a lot of the cars and helps with the bashes and everything like that. Hello. Hello Mr. Josh. We come bearing a little bit of a gift for you. So this is a bit of a thanks for the um, work that you did for the LZ Festival and everything leading up to it. That is really cool. And I'm, so, I'm sorry that it's tagged down a bit. Again, <laughs> no, it's, it, it, it's not my best work. That before I drop it. That's really, really cool. Thank you very much. Hopefully you start answering the phone to us again now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the plan, this is the plan. <laughs> what's, going, what's going next? <laughs> no. Off season is going to be dangerous, I think. <laughs> no, that's cool if you go on the wall now. Will you call friends? Me and my amigos go to move for caution. That's what you do when you got the power like our stand. Exhausting, saying the truth, but no one listen. How to go and get it, let's move. Next up, bye. Yes, sir. The blow who's going with them. Wanna go fast or far? You choose the distance. You know when I go, when it's a wrap, uh, kudos. So we're in Dubai. And next stop is Australia. Caught in the wind, but never get lost in the wind. That's how my story begins. Woo! Baby, I'm all in. Had to go out again in the morning. There is no other way of putting that, but that was, well, horrendous for me. I can only imagine what it was like for you. I did 32 hours on a plane in the one 48 hour period. I'm okay. I feel okay. What's your, your eyes are, my eyes are open to fine. A, everything's fine. Everything's great. I'm having a great time. Adam said he got us a really nice rental car. Great. It's a Peugeot. Fantastic. So we have landed at Calder Park Raceway. So this is just outside Melbourne. This is where the event this weekend is going down. As you can see, prep is underway. They've got cool grandstands everywhere. There's a big wall run at the end. We got crazy driver. I don't think Australia's ever had an event this high profile or this big, no pressure. But uh, yes, yeah, the finale of the LZ World Tour. We've had an amazing year. So I think it's gonna be a really good finale. The fact that we've got a six road RX-7 and Mad Mike at this one as well, it's gonna be wild. So here we are in the middle, and as you can see, there is cars everywhere. We're just before the LZ World Tour in Australia, so everything's last minute, Jason. Getting the stickers done, getting the cars clean. You've had to build a couple of cars for this event. It's been We hectic. got the keys, I think we settled two weeks ago. You Value at, for it's money. Like, it's right like here. subtlety, style, <laughs> impressiveness. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Obnoxious. Obnoxious. I don't know what's happening. So what you've done here is you put a turbo into a turbo into a turbo into a turbo. Did you watch like exhibit on Pimp My Ride and go, I heard you like turbos. <laughs> so we put a turbo on the turbo that you put a turbo on the first turbo. Pretty much. This is just like the YouTube build where you're like, oh, I'll start with one. Uh, let's try a compound. Let's see if they work. Oh, I've got another turbo here. Let's just put that on too. I say less and do more. Do more. Do more. Do more. Oh, I tell her do more.
this is the beast of the six rotor. So you can confirm that when you say something like this on the internet, someone always screws you around, but this is the first six, six rotor rotary. The first six rotor bullet engine. So um, there has been, I believe, three others in the world. Probably not much knowledge around them or, or who gets to see them, which was the biggest point why we wanted to build a six rotor and put it in a drift car, is we wanted to bash it all day, every day, get everywhere and anywhere we can and showcase that this is a reliable motor and it will sound insane and it will deliver what needs to be delivered. That's exactly sort of where we're working with it at the moment as well, so we're chuffed. Suited and booted. Uh, yeah, ready to go in this incredible car. Also, big shout out to SB Tools. They're actually from Australia, so they're from this side of the world. Support those, support these guys, and honestly, best tools in the game. God bless. <laughs> I can't not like this car. I feel that if I was going to build a car next year just for pure passion, it would have to be a two-tone S13 and 15s. That is mad about the 15s at the moment. Because I have all the big wheel cars now, so I want to do a small wheel car. I think they'd be more fun I think to that's drive. A wise decision I feel like made. even if it was an NA, it would still be fun to drive. And you should pursue your passions. Thank you, Dan. I, I feel like I need more positive people in my life like that. <laughs> Don't encourage them any more than it needs to be encouraged. <laughs> As always, apologies for not covering all the cars in the show. But if we were to cover everything, the video would be about 27 hours long. And we just don't have you guys' attention for that long. So I think track action is going on, so let's go check out what's going on there. Alright, so we're here under an underpass in Melbourne with a bunch of GTRs, Skylines, Sylvias, whole crew came out tonight. One of our friends told us to come and check it out. We're actually literally under a freeway right now and it's apparently going to be a big cruise tonight, meeting up with different car clubs. So we're down for it. Um, we don't know what's going to happen, but you guys are along for the ride.
So we're just saying on the way here that we've choreographed worse, worse rollers than that on the is way. He, is he that was random yeah. and we didn't even plan it and it was like one of the nicest rolling shots we did all across the bridges in Melbourne. So we stopped up here at a 7-Eleven. We got joined by Sevens and a 7-Eleven. 11 Sevens? It's almost like they planned this. 11 Sevens and a 7-Eleven. Not so many Oryx 7s are here, so this is uh, quite the night it's turning into be. So, very cool cars, very cool people, cool vibes. It's what the car scene is all about. Um, and yeah, this is just a taster of what's going on in Melbourne. So, I'll stand here waiting to see what the car looks like going from a stock body 911 to a Ralph Weld beauty in two days. second away to let you guys know that we also feel like this is ridiculous that we're actually here witnessing this this whole year has been absolutely wild to meet so many legends of the game and the Kaisan was definitely one person we wanted to meet we got our photo which we were pretty pumped about trying not to be too much fanboys about it This one is wild. Right, yeah. I love the wheels, I love the interior, love everything about it, but the bit for me is this. Right this is like yeah. the prettiest engine setup I've ever seen on a, Thank you. On a, on a Jay-Z car. Thank you. Like, everything is just yeah. perfect. Appreciate this is that. like a time and effort situation. Yeah, here. yeah, it definitely took time to come together. The etching actually was done Sunday and Monday night. No way. So, so yeah, we did this one then, and then Monday night, we knocked this out in the hotel room and then came back and assembled it before the show. So you guys, we found our favorite car of the show. And this lunatic called Sean has built the world's wildest Kai truck, I think, in the whole world. All this carbon looks like it's it's unbelievable, but it's, it's extensive. There's quite a lot here. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of real modern aero on it and maybe it doesn't really work because of you know being completely flat but we still wanted to do a lot of the practices that we would you know try to evacuate you know air behind the you know the rear the front of the rear wheel and that's why we have the body coming in like that uh, we got a lot of ducting and it's you know we don't, it's not a show truck we plan on racing it and more like smiles for miles than uh, you know trying to go break records but it's just something uh, you know fun to do I've raced Pikes Peak a couple times, and maybe there's a K truck in the future that goes up. I, I don't know. It would be so fun to watch something like that. It's yeah, like, it's it, stupid. It's stupid, but in such a good way because it's so engineered. You could have just made it stupid, and it didn't have any functionality, but it's yeah. got all the functionality to back it all up. You just challenge yourself with a very unusual machine. I think that's a great way to put it as a challenge because this is such a terrible platform to race. <laughs> Uh, and we're gonna go, you know, ha have fun with it. And I just love the way, I've never heard anyone ever describe their build as, it's just a terrible chassis to yeah. start with. And there's, there's no argument, it's the most unaerodynamic yeah. thing in the world. It is flat. It's just a box, yeah. and you've made it look so cool. Man, this thing is just wild. I have to shake your hand because- Thank you so much. I, if we're gonna leave you with something from this show, it has to be this because it's my favorite car here and yeah. We're at Hoonigan. We got a big setup this year. We're gonna go check it out. Like a 
magic trick. What? I don't. Was there a car out there? I think if me and you were in there, full visibility, we're still crashing into each other. Oh, if me and you went in there, we just crashed into each other before we got the first time. Uh, clutch kick in. So we're here with Tim. Tim, Hi. this built, wow, must be probably yeah, my favorite car of the show so far which I don't even know how to explain this to people at home. You built a DeLorean yeah. with a body kit bar, our friend Kaiser who designed it, and then you put an LS in it. I did. And that's a real thing that exists now in the world. <laughs> that happened, yeah. Where did, where did you start? Did you have a DeLorean? Did you get a DeLorean? Believe it or not, I bought this car as a bucket list to just own a DeLorean. And then uh, a bunch of friends of mine scumbagged me into building this, and then once I in was introduced to Kaiser, he came up with a rendering, then I was like, okay, well, we'll have to figure it out. We have to figure out how to get this done. And it's just a standard 5.3 LS, individual throttle bodies with custom one-off plenums, with long tube headers, Garrett G30 mirror inch, image turbos down low. With so this is the coolest yeah, thing. So the, 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 yeah, let's all more, go down here. There's more, because it looks- more to look. <laughs> Right, so I'm down here with TJ and Dylan. What's going on, brother? TJ here. Hey, that's I'm Dylan. Ooh. Hi, I'm a YouTube guy. I'm a, I'm a YouTuber guy. What's up? Hey. Wow, okay. Yeah, we're, Dylan, we're, we're there now. That was our impersonation of each other. <laughs> it's been a long week. So this is... And I'm, I'm not going to try and... Uh, I've been a bit of a fanboy over this car, if I'm going to be honest. Like, I've not watched a lot of YouTube builds, but when I, I saw you unboxing this, this was... This got me excited. The way that I'm trying to get it across in this video is like body kits come so far yeah. and to put a GT3 kit onto a street car, yeah. like that's no easy task. No, it sucked. It was, <laughs> it was, yeah. you know, there's no sugar coat on this video. No, I'll, I'll second that, it sucked. No, I, mean, it's, I mean, you kind of just said it, right? Like when we had the idea of it, what made it exciting was questioning if it would work <laughs> because if you don't know, the GT3 chassis of an M4 is not the same thing as the street car. They like look the same, but the wheelbases are different, the suspension is different, the dynamics of it, the functionalities are different. And of the GT3 era, uh, in that in GT3 Cup racing, not all of the GT3 Cups or not all the GT3 vehicles are that drastically different from the street vehicles. No, these are a completely different engineering from front firewall forward, rear firewall back, compared to a lot of GT3 cars that aren't. Which makes the M4 a wildly interesting car to try to pull this off on. Credit to you guys Thanks, and buddy. everyone else that was involved in it. And this is it, where street cars have gone, putting GT3 <laughs> kits on street cars and the pain behind the I, eyes. I hate to be the one to be like, here's the standard. Yeah. Oh, set that bar, baby. Right, set that bar. So yeah, now we're adding air jacks to street cars now. <laughs> Function form. They meet somewhere in the middle. That's where this car sits. What is up guys and welcome to the Drift Games Trip to Japan series and what a place to start. I can't believe I'm here, right here where they filmed that iconic scene from Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, the Shibuya Crossing in the heart of Tokyo. Two weeks I'll be here exploring everything about Japanese car culture which has inspired almost everything in my life from the drift events we've done to the cars we've done. Everything has originated here with our own twist and flair of course on top. 
What I really wanted this year to finish what was our most incredible year of traveling all around the world, but coming here to the Mecca of JDM car culture to just see what it's like today. Is it as good and crazy as we think it is? Who will we meet? Where will we go? I mean, look at this place. It is wild. I can't believe Drift Games are finally in Japan. We're going to hook up with our boy Lucas. We're going to jump straight into it. And we're going to start exploring this amazing country. So we hope you guys enjoy all the videos because I'm probably going to have this smile on my face throughout all of them. So we're going to be doing some drifting. We're going to go to events, but I really want to get to the core of JDM car culture and try and be inspired for 2024 by what I see here. So without further ado, Drift Games is in Japan and we are ready to explore. We are here in Daikoku, straight off the plane, and I gotta come check it out. Now, it's not the busiest night here, but we we'll still check out what's the best. So Daikoku is like a parking area. It's near Yokohama. As you can see, there's a big freeway around. So it's kind of remote, which is where most of the car guys meet up. Every day of the week depends on the day. Sometimes you get it busy, sometimes you get it quiet. It's a bit like JDM car safari because you never quite know. So for some reason, you get all your JDM, Liberty Walk stuff as normal, wide body stuff, classic Porsches, a Sierra doesn't make any sense, does it? But yeah, there's just you just don't know where to look because everything rolls through. So it's not like a car show where everything just parks up for the day, you have the time to walk around. Everything comes and goes. It's just wild. Look at this. All the neons. Yeah, that going on. I'm just rolling through. The Lexus. All the screens on. As rare as it would be to see an orange GR86, there's an orange GR86, there's an orange GR86, there's an orange GR86, there's an orange GR86, and another, and as DJ Khaled would say, and another one. Hey bro, have you seen where the orange GR86 I don't know where the orange GR86 could be, but uh, it's around here somewhere. So my guide, Lucas, Hello, Lucas. Hello, mate. What do we reckon? What's the plan? So it's, it's beginning busy here, but it's not quite busy yet. I know there's one spot where you can kind of maybe catch a few street drifters doing a few skids. Just right around the block. Sounds highly illegal. And I'm, I'm into it. You can catch us with the fans in a high car 
Because we're back in Daikoku. I'm not sure what happened there. Some weird footage got mixed in it. I don't know what. Just kind of. You did the edit, so I don't know where that came from. It wasn't you, right? Uh, it was just from like stock footage. Stock footage. Morning, Lucas. Hey, let's do this. Welcome to D1 GP, baby. So this is wild. We are currently about to walk up to watch some competitive runs at D1 GP. It's gonna be a wild day. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. This is wild, this this whole competition looks. So this is Lucas's boy. Yes, they are too. How long have you been drifting? About nine, ten years. Nine, ten years. Even though he's baby faced, he looks like he's like 21. So today is the second round of this event. So this is the final round of the season? Yes, this is the final day. So what are you feeling today? A little bit rainy? A little, little bit, bit raining. I'm a little bit nervous. But the car is perfect, so it'll be okay. So you got me in your corner. Yes. And we're going to be cheering you on. We'll say best of luck today, all right? Thank you so much. Thanks, I'll do my best. This is one thing I've noticed. In terms of drift bills, I think they're probably a little behind mm. because they still do like tub darches, even though these are carbon. Kind of like, it's like a similar setup, but not overly complicated. Rocket bunny guy. Hello. <laughs> there you go. So that's a, a classic moment where that guy is the uh, designer and owner of Rocket Bunny and Pandem. So, you know, just bumping into him in the pits. Not being a fanboy whatsoever. <laughs> So it is super early in the day, so we're getting to the Battles Top 16 later on, but because it's early, I want to do a little tour of the paddock because there's a lot of very cool stuff here <laughs> everywhere. So biggest stand in the paddock is Liberty Walk and they have unveiled their new silhouette kit for the Murcielago. It's a drift job. It's crazy. Daigo is actually ripping this. This thing is just wild. And then the wildness continues because they got a 400Z which they just revealed. This is my favorite car. This is my future car if anybody wants to give me one. Let me know. So we don't get this in Europe unfortunately. Yeah, it's a 400Z not coming to Europe because of emissions rules. Boo. Boring Europe. But Lucas, the two standout cars, the two cars that would All probably right. be on a bedroom wall are here, which are the Liberty Walk, Testarossa, and F40. I made the devil run. 
<laughs> this is probably the most internet friendly car at the moment, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a showstopper. This thing. So what they did was basically cut up an F40 to add a wide body kit, which is brave. There's not many of these in the world, and it is just executed. Can you imagine this guy's probably had a cigarette on and just went and said, if an F40 wasn't rare enough to cut up, let's just cut up a Testarossa. So yeah. did the same thing here. Look how good this car looks. Didn't Ferrari like... Yeah, Ferrari actually got in touch with them saying, you can't be doing this. And it's not a Ferrari anymore, technically. And that they're taking away all of its legitimacy as a car from Ferrari because they cut it up. But I think it was worth it. I think, honestly, Ferrari is just a little mad. Everything. Just super cool. Built from the hands of a god, I hear my mind of it. Born in the heart of the fire that rose out of it. This is gonna be very loud very soon. started in Japan in the hills has now got madness So this is pretty wild. I'm gonna watch the D1 GP finals in the bleachers with all the fans. 20 years later from watching option DVDs, I'm sitting in the stands watching D1. This is gonna be fun. Story 2023. I'm in the S14. We're doing five tracks with 400 drivers over two days. Let's get into it. tracks I've only done two so far one and a half technically with my car breaking down so I'm starting at school which is the easiest one right yes easiest. easiest well we got the skid we got current curry land which is a skid pad but school is the first legit track it's gonna be wild so stay tuned let's get it
difficult. Car is working good, but uh, yeah. I think I want a little bit more of a challenge than that. Yeah, when the hey, hey, look, everybody with it. Eyes super heavy, I'm moving steady right through the city, lift it. For the bun of gas, get up out the way and watch you want the Michelin. Ties tied away, better ride that way. Swimming with the fishes, try not to get offended. My spaceship is coming. We are here, it's North Course. This is the one with the big history, the wall run. And it's absolute chaos out there today. It's like 70 cars on track. We're about to get in the mix. We'll talk you through how this is one of my favorite tracks in the world. I could barely see you through the shade, who shade on my shine. You focus on my step, you moving backwards, I promise you lose me in the Oh, love it, Misu. know what to do so I'm gonna try and follow somebody else maybe behind this guy maybe there is a McLaren behind me and a McLaren drift car I don't know what's going on It's the fastest track on the entire Ibisu mountain. Also, they only open it for Matsuri. It's sketchy, it's like fourth, fifth gear. This one's gonna be tough. It might let less or, but I can't wait to give it a go. Geezer with the tracks they want to hear. Still they send the messages in bottles. Was this really meant or was it not for? Can't get the dust. Oh, this track is super hard. I don't even know that straight is like just so long. You don't know the timing of when you need to uh, do the entry is like really difficult. That entry, I tried it in fourth. I think I need more speed. Fifth? I tried fifth? Fifth gear? Does that seem like a sensible thing to do? I cannot do it. 
but I also don't know where to go. So I can't see anybody else. I don't know the techniques. But there's a man here that does. Ruisse. It's crazy because it was his first time here and he killed him with four skills. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. bye. <laughs> he obviously didn't see the little crash there. <laughs> Yeah, I was killing it when I went by you and then I kind of crashed. But you have your car here, yeah. which is a Pro D1 car. So I think I want to jump in with him and let the pros do it. Show me what I'm trying to do because I don't know what I'm trying to do out there. So I'm pumped up. Let's go for a spin. Let's go. Alright guys, I'm about to go to the Toge circuit and the Toge circuit is like a mountain pass in Japan. I really want to do it, but in this car I'm super nervous. Lucas is going to follow me in his car, get some cool shots, and let's hope we don't crash. Let's do this boys! David ride along. <laughs> See you later, Jordan. Are you ready? I am ready. This is wild. <laughs> it still has a GT3 wheel. Yes, GT3 wheel. <laughs> you, you are one in a million.
<laughs> and a lot of grip. Skill. <laughs> yes, yes, a lot of skill. A lot of skill. out there if a guy could do it in a McLaren I could certainly do it in an S14 so I'm gonna go rip some laps uh, in the S14 on Nishi stacked into like 60 70 cars it's gonna be fun this is sketchy stuff now it's like 70 cars Survived almost everything. We had an awesome time drifting with our friends, new friends, all the local Japanese guys on what five, six tracks. Did them all, went close, tandem, didn't back down, didn't act like a little bitch because I had a very nice car. No, he didn't. If people say you're not crashing, you're not driving hard enough, I drove pretty hard and I didn't crash, and it shows that you can do it, you can bring something nice here. Now it's time to bring this back to power vehicles, get a little wipe down, and the next time we see it after here will be on the Emerald Isle, ready for a Drift Games Invitational. Right, let's do it. Delivery on this is fire. We are here at Dupree slash Boostar. But my boy Ruse, Ruse is gonna bring us a little tour to show you guys some cool stuff that's hidden away that may not have been seen before on video. Let's go! Now we add weld. <laughs> so Ryusei is doing the intros for me now, this is brilliant. I'm going to take a break. I'll be doing most of the Japanese speaking in this episode and Ryusei will do all of the English speaking. <laughs> I heard a rumor mm -hmm. that the driver of this car mm -hmm. comes from RC drifting. Yeah, RC drifting. So he is the RC drifting champion. Yeah, champion. And you gave him a yeah. real car. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. And he's good. Yeah, he is a good driver. Wow. That's wild. I, I've seen people come from the simulator. Yeah. But never from RC. So he understands the the technique. Yeah. It's amazing. So we want to see what's powering cars in Japan for for This is a oh, it's very clean. Maybe the 1,000. One, 1,000 horsepower in a JZ. And you gave it to an RC drifter. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Yeah, he is a crazy. So you are the driver of the car, the JZX? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What up? So this is the RC champion that now drives in Formula Drift Japan. I'll oh, see. It's wild. And then you have all the the parts for RC cars, right? And the tires. The Velino tire for RC drifting. That is madness. Look, the different compounds. So I get 8C. It has so much grip in the normal tire. <laughs> it is. So we live in a world now where you can buy a Velino tire that an RS for an RC car that has more grip than the normal tire. For RC. <laughs> Your 
my boy, yep. Ruse, who has been guiding me through all of the Japanese car culture here. And we're at a car dealership because everyone wants to know back home, how much are the cars in Japan right now? Because the yen has dropped in value. And are we the right time to buy some cool cars? Let's go check them out. So I've got my XE calculator here because it used to be, Ruste, right? That you could look at this and go, this is like $11,500. Yeah, like that used to be. Yeah. Used to be. Do you want to know how much this car is right now? So manual Orbi 25 is 7,100 euro for an Orbi 25 manual right now. And this one is 11,500 euro. And that's a clean car. 208,000 kilometers, so it's not too bad. 8,000 euro. Wow. 8,000 euro, that's super cheap. <laughs> This is more what we want to look at here, S14s, right? Mine, so we got two. We got a Kuki and we got a Zenki. Non-turbo manual, 230,000 kilometers. So it's 120, 7,400 euro for an S14. So 7,400 euro, shipped back to Ireland, that would be about, give or take, with taxes, roughly 10 and a half thousand euro, roughly. This one is an, also a non-turbo and it's roughly, 9,200 euros. So you're probably talking 13 or 14,000 euro landed back home without VRT for a pretty nice car. Oh, boys back home will want to know. You'll want to know. Minter, here. Minter, Truno A86. This one is very clean. So cheap. So this car is 11,400 euro. The yen is so bad at the moment for some reason. This car in Ireland would be about 20, 25,000 euro. Got a Verosa. Uh oh. So we got a Barossa, massive exhaust, 11,000 euro. Wow, it's cheap. It's got, this one has a nice wide body on it. Right? It's a four door, 434 with the wide body and an R32 four door. 11 and a half, 12,000 euro. So that's quite cheap. Orbi 25 manual wide body R35. So two, it's cheap. Like, so that's 13,000 euro for a wide body or 34 which is an RB25 manual but not the Neo but still nice looking car you almost assume that it's Japan and we have all the prices inflated but because the yen right now is quite low in comparison to everything else it might not be by the time you watch this video in the future the yen could rule the world but right now these cars are super cheap so if you're looking to buy a, your first Japanese import or import your first car um, this is a dealership by the way not an auction so this would have the dealerships what they want to make on it on top of it and it's still quite cheap so it's impressive that uh you could buy this stuff still at this time in 2023 for reasonable money so interesting so we are going to a secret place okay so one of the good things about driving around with ruse is he knows some secret places that some car there's a lamborghini over there whoa very secret place where a lot of cars are uh, stored Let's go. and i can already tell you there's some wild stuff here so obviously someone here has a big subaru collection that they've just left here in the car park it's like old school subaru there's a bit of josh right here look at this thing yeah nice the hawkeye as we call them the yellow i've never seen one in yellow look at this little thing with the arches on st202 bug eye but i've never seen one in yellow either so i've seen two yellow cars here that are original yellow that i've never seen and then how iconic is this just sitting in a car park in the 555 livery it's a rari a ferrari yeah that's What's a grill it's different it's, tough color. it's a nice color though, isn't it that's for using to go right there it's a spaceship it's a what Have you seen a Ferrari like this? It's not the prettiest Ferrari, it's, but it's a rare one. It's a very rare one. It looks like a Lotus Esprit. Mm. <laughs> what is this place? Beautiful morning as we drive from Yokohama to Tokyo. And guess what I'm driving? An amazing black Oryx 7 FD. car to make the journey to Daigo Saito. There's a Rolls 
Rolls Royce MX-5s everywhere. This is nuts. Wild. Konnichiwa. This is gonna be nuts. Absolutely nuts. Okay, so this is the showroom that greets you when you come in to Daigoland. I don't know if it's really called Daigoland, but I'm just gonna call it Daigoland. Come in off the road and this is what greets you. A full supercar display. Just wild. So this is, I don't know if you're a purist, it's gonna seem crazy, but these are all wide body. So this is a wide body Testarossa. And then we got a 308 in wide body. Ferrari 430 wide body Liberty Walk again. So Daigo's done a lot of work with Liberty Walk over the years. And then not wide bodied, but also very cool is this Lamborghini Diablo in red. It's almost like a giant Hot Wheels box. Guys, we just off camera uh, caught up with Daigo and had some barbecue and there's a lot of people hanging out here today so we're kind of exploring around his crazy land I guess Daigo land right? Daigo land. land which sounds like Lego land but it's way more fun straight away just you know chilling the coolest skyline probably ever Ken Mary this is actually a drift car so I'm just gonna I don't think we for scale here can see the width of this car I feel like that's the most stressful run you've ever done in first Jesus gear. Jesus Christ, yeah. <laughs> first gear never felt so scary. You're right. What a fun car though. All right. It's time to boogie. But me and Daigo held hands for like at least saw, two seconds. Bro, I saw you guys over there have a little You guys had a, a little moment. moment. You guys had oh! oh. <laughs> This, this is wild. Okay, so we're taking a little break to come to a place called Big Bang Karting, which is like a drift track. We're at Drift Cars and Big Bang, and we're gonna go and bang doors. Hurry up, Habibi. We are going to finish our Japan series. We fly tomorrow back to Ireland, and this is the perfect place to finish. Here, in front of the madness of Daikoku Foto, our last little, little stop before we go home. We hope you guys have enjoyed this series. We got to finally see one of the crazy Lamborghinis with the strobes and the chrome and all the rhinestones in the headlights. Um, yeah, just take it all in. Japanese car culture is alive and well. 
we are here to check out just one last little piece before we go home. Lucas is going to be on the B-roll. We're going to put together a nice little montage. And this is Japan. What is the guy saying? What is he saying? To you? He said, "Go home." <laughs> Please, you guys, go home. Oh. Here is my MX-5 Mark 1 that I've owned since I've been 18 years old. Over its time, it's had a lot of different looks, and right now it's in a worse state than it's ever been. In this video, you're going to see the full restoration of this car, and finally bring it back to its prime that it once was. So, engine is out. Quite the mess we can make in. So we started this at 11 o'clock and it is now almost four. So in five hours, we have pretty much dismantled this thing into a bare shell. So here we go, the car is back from sandblasting. So from this point on, stuff has to move pretty fast because from this day, pretty much the car has to be done within a week and obviously with it being a bare shell that is quite the task so here are all the destroy or die goodies so we have the rear arms that's to take the camber out of the car the rear hub which i'm excited to play around with because it's got two caliper mounting points so i can have one specifically for the handbrake and the foot brake so that'd be much better So exactly the same as the kit I had before. So this is the Firefly kit. It's kind of a deuce style, I believe that's what, it, what it's called. Just like that, it's transformed. So we are down here at O'Neill Auto Body is where we take everything to get painted. Two days, two days. I think we can manage it. You are aware you're looking at a, a bare shell. Bare sandblasted raw metal shell that will have to be epoxied, painted, then the panels will have to be painted. And of course, you being you, Josh, it's not one color. Sorry, sorry, we'll do it. For the power of a transition, you guys are just gonna see it straight away. Okay, massive progress being made. All subframes on, brakes on, gearbox in, diff in, prop shaft, ev everything from the underneath is in. The only thing that needs to be done, which Wayne is doing now, is the uh, plumbing of the brake. I'm sure you can guess now why I call them jazzy. So similar to the Verosa and my RX-7, we have the Option Drift bucket seats. Actually, not just bucket seats, the party seats, which, I mean, this is completely irrelevant and by no means necessary, but I think it actually suits the subframes perfectly. So it's a color match with the bottom of the car, which 
again, is pointless. Okay, we are here. So how long do you think, Ryan? Ash, an hour or so, it's a... An hour? <coughs> right. That is a challenge. But, mm, hour I, and a half, hour and a half. An to, hour and a half? I have to take land as well. If you can do it in an hour and a half, I'll buy you a chocolate bar of your choice. Not a share size, just a normal one. What's my go-to chocolate bar? Gosh. Plain Cadbury's. Plain Do you even know? Caramel? No! Galaxy! Not in fruit? Galaxy! Okay. Galaxy. Okay, a, ga a, a galaxy caramel. You don't even know me, man. We're not at lunch together in a long time. We were like tight. <laughs> So it is all go ahead here. The guy for fitting the windscreens come down here at the same time they're doing the exhaust. <laughs> this is literally as last minute as it gets. Once again, more people pulling. I don't know how everything's getting done in this car. It's ridiculous, but vital fabrication, massive shout out to Ryan and Charlie that just did that in under an hour and the Galaxy Bar well, uh, well earned. It is now just past six. So I'm not even gonna hold up the guys at all. The delivery's been printed and they just need to put it on. So without wasting any more time, let's release the new look of formerly called Purple Rhino, but now T-Plane. So as it's winter, obviously it gets dark a lot sooner. For example, it's currently 4.20. So instead of cutting the action short, short, we have lights covering the whole of the Japfest layout and we're gonna do a nighttime drift jam. So this is definitely a first for us it's not the first time it's been done, obviously, in Mondello, but it's the first time for us to do this. It's a last minute thing, and yeah, pretty cool. First time drifting at night in Mondello Park, which is it's gonna be awesome. First time drifting dark in Mondello, but it's actually first time drifting dark ever. Here goes nothing, I guess.
up holes. See how much power this will make. track, have some fun, get some smiles on faces and get into day two of the Invitational with Club Loose. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to test my car. It's warm enough right now and fingers crossed we should be good. Basically, there were the wet tires from Wayne's car, so it was only 12 psi in them, so obviously they didn't need it, but we're not going to tell Josh that. There you have it guys, part two of the best of 2023 from Drift Games. We decided to put all of the footage together for one big mashup for Christmas. We've had an amazing 23 and it wouldn't have been possible for me without all the boys working so hard, traveling all over the world, putting on amazing events. To everybody who bought a ticket to one of our events, bought merch from the shop, supported us in the comments, subscribed to the channel, and supported us in any way, whether it's our families, our friends, our people that we work with when it comes to car builders, painters, tuners, all our sponsors, it wouldn't be possible. It's a huge team effort and we hope that we're keeping the dream alive for a lot of people when it comes to car content, especially on this part of the world where it is so difficult to make it. Um, we've had an amazing 23. I guess you guys are all asking now what's gonna happen in 2024. Well, you might have to find out on the next video, but we got some very big plans that are gonna make 2023 seem pretty normal when we get into 2024. But up until then, thank you guys so much for watching our best ofs part one and part two. Thank you to the boys for putting them together. It's amazing to look back and see what we accomplished in a year. But we're only getting started. We've got a lot of big plans ahead. We hope you guys will be along for the ride. Once again, happy Christmas, happy new year. We'll see you in 24.